Hello everybody and welcome back to 21st Century Football, a complete guide to football in the 21st century. The clues in the title. Each week we pick a player that we've loved from the last 20 plus years and we break it down and we celebrate them. Today it's Gareth Bale, the Welsh wizard, fantastic at golf and he's not bad at football too. And I'm joined as ever, so I was just a bit reluctant to say, I don't know if that says more about our relationship than anything else ever would. It's that my day. That, thanks. I'm still here. Yeah. They, they still want me around, which is good. It's nice. always nice. Nice little Burberry number today for the people yeah. that are watching on YouTube. Uh, it's actually Burton. But Burton. Yeah, but again, we, we shouldn't be naming sponsors. There's other shirts around. You know, we haven't got a sponsorship yet, have we? They're making shirts like that. They can sponsor straight away. And <laughs> welcome back, Neve. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm excited for this one. Um, last time we started, it was about Aguero, and we sort of started on a downer because he relegated your team. Um, Gareth Bale, have you got any ill will against him? He also relegated. No, he didn't relegate my team. He's okay. <laughs> Thank he's God. good. Yeah, he's, he's an okay player, yeah. Oh, nice stuff. Um, your, your face completely dropped then. You, you thought just, that was actually true. Gareth Bale, we, we've basically invited Neve yeah. on and both of the players have relegated Bolton. Well, I know what relegation's like, so I wouldn't want to wish that on anyone. Though. Yeah, you do, as a Birmingham yeah, City exactly. fan. Yeah. We've had it a lot. Um, we start, as ever, with the Wikipedia page. Now, we're not going through the whole Wikipedia page because that would take too long, uh, but we've each got a little headline. Neve, can I start with you? Gareth Frank Bale, born 16th of July 1989, is a Welsh professional footballer who plays as a winger for Premier League club Tottenham Hotspur on loan from Real Madrid of La Liga and the Wales national team. Um, on loan at Tottenham at the moment, Neve, and he recently came out and said um, he's going back, which, you know what social media is like, most people are saying that he's using Tottenham for a bit of training. Yeah, work experience, get himself at the Euros, <laughs> <laughs> which says a lot really considering his relationship with Real Madrid that he's he seems to want to go back although I don't know if that's just because at the end of the day he is contracted to go I back so he, it's, he clarified it's, that didn't he yeah. said that I am contracted to go back to Real Madrid it's not a you know one thing yeah. and his relationship with Zidane is such a weird one such a weird one obviously we're going to go on to the Champions on League well. stuff but <laughs> what do you think it is I just think they don't like each other it's just uh, straight up. They just need to find a common goal and like, you know, maybe that could be golf, but I don't think it would be because that would have been established by now. Yeah. Might be a, a book. Mm. Um, you know, they've what, just got to find a book together? No, no. Like no, a children's no, book, like Frank Lampard. Don't be <laughs> they've just got to find one thing that brings them together. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The thing that jumps out at me, the name Frank is second name. What's My that? second name's Frank. Is it? I just didn't think. I didn't think Gareth was a Your Frank. Your second name's Statman <laughs> Frank Day. Yeah, absolutely. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? Your second name's yeah. Frank. I, I just didn't think Gareth was a Frank. I just, it never struck me as a that's what type of guy he is. But maybe we've got more in common than I thought. You you got Irish roots, haven't you? I, Irish, Scottish, Swiss, not um, Welsh, and very much Cockney. So a real <laughs> mixing pot. You ain't got any Cockney in you, Dave. Do you want to um, read your bit of the Wikipedia? On the 1st of September 2013, Bale was transferred to Real Madrid for an undisclosed fee. Press at the time reported that transfer value at a figure between 91 million euros and 100 million euros. You could buy yourself a small island in the Caribbean for that, maybe. Um, yeah, I've got a really interesting fact as well. Um, goes quite in detail. Uh, Bale is teetotal. There we go. Um, any thoughts on that, guys? Well, I mean, we've spoke previously, Neve, and, and Dave is quick to um, condone certain players' lifestyles and, and healthy eating, but Bale being teetotal. Yeah, you'll be pleased to know he's also got a fully functioning bed. Wow. I think that's the big, that is the big thing. That's what I wanted to know. But Gareth Bale's had his injuries, so maybe he's got the wrong type of bed. Maybe they need to give you know the podcast a call, his agent can get in touch. I heard it's a memory foam it. mattress. Maybe that's, see, that's why Neve's on the podcast. Knowledge like that. Maybe that's how we can fix Gareth Bale's Back, hamstrings, you know, whatever. The last little bit, sorry, I, I didn't quite finish off the, the game. Uh, in January 2016, documents were leaked. And apparently the fee was above what I'd mentioned previously, 100 um, million, 100.8 million euros, which is a record transfer fee. At that time in the Premier League, was Gareth Bale worth over 100 million euros? Well, this is pre-Neymar. So you've got, uh, when Neymar's transfer comes in, I mean, that... That messes everything up. But that watching back that season when I think he wins the PFA Player of the Year award, the goals in that are like, it's like he's playing FIFA on his own. They're absolutely unbelievable. And it's a good Spurs side, but it's not a great Spurs side, which made me think, you know, imagine if he was in a prime Bolton team 2001. 
with Ivan with, Campo uh, around JJ him. JJ Kutcher. Oh, JJ. Ivan, I hate that. That's going to win the Premier League, that. <laughs> but, um, what were your first memories of him? I think um, the first memories, probably a young kid coming through at Southampton that was quite slight, not the greatest defender, was, you know, there's a lot of talk of him going forward in an attacking sense like we know fullbacks these days like to do. Yeah. But I think it took him time. I think maybe the transfer to Tottenham was a little bit early, like similar to Theo Walcott moving from Southampton to Arsenal. Um, I think it just kind of shows that, look, if you, if you do sign these young players, pulling them out of situations that they're comfortable in, that they're growing in, maybe not the best thing. Yeah. That always makes me think, like, what did they see when they signed him? Did they see him as the defender and then obviously went on to play like that for Tottenham? Or did they see something else? Like, what potential did they see in him to think we're going to sign him? Well, out? as you pointed out as well, the start to his Tottenham Hotspur career was absolutely abysmal, wasn't it? Yeah, 24 games, not able to win in any of those games. It's not a good start. And it almost think, you almost think then just I don't get the signing. Do you know what I mean? Like I just mm. don't, what what do they see in a player? When oh, 100%, they... I think they're signing a left back and they played yeah. him predominantly at left back in that spell. But when you look at Bale and his strength, his ability to carry, his power, his, his drive has always been there. So you think naturally that is someone that you could play higher up the pitch. But I think it shows recruitment and certain clubs doing certain things. Harry Redknapp was in charge at that time, wasn't mm. he? He didn't quite know Gareth Bale. He was going to send them out on loan. Well, he was. Gonna, well, I think we were chatting before we recorded. He was going to sell him at one point. There's a there's a Daily Mail article that always does the round when Bale does something good, where he nearly signed for Blues for three million pounds. Um, Birmingham City, that is. Yeah, well, so I don't think I need to prefix that because that is the ultimate city. Um, but yeah, I mean, just think what could have been. What could have been? But I think you know one of the the days that kind of he stepped up was that Inter Milan Champions League. In the San Siro. I think that was when we, we saw Bale in a different ilk, like we're sort of saying, from a defender to a midfield. I think that was the game where we thought, wow, Aaron Lennon on one wing, Gareth Bale on the other wing. Devastating. Yeah, I, because in the, the first game, they they still end up losing, don't they? But he makes a mug of Mike on. Uh, but then when they get them back to White Hart Lane, as it was, absolutely destroys him, doesn't he? Nick? Yeah, Mike on at the time as well, one of the best players in that position in the I world. I think he was the best. Yeah, yeah. and he made him look, Average. <laughs> Which I, th- I think the interesting side is sometimes when you're really, really fast as a defender, use your pace to get out of a lot of situations. Sometimes your position isn't great. And Mycom was the attacking right back that was so, so good in the final third. And I just don't think he was used to playing someone that was just that bit faster than him mm-hmm. and quite a bit faster than him. And you remember that the direct play and him just running at him and everything was going right. And it was one of those interesting situations where it was actually a left footer playing on the left, but he was scoring goals, you know, striking across the goalkeeper. Mm. And I think when you look back on Gareth Bale and his, and his emergence, it is interesting that he started there. And I, I sort of expected him to kind of move back to the left-hand side at some point in his career, but it hasn't really happened. And maybe that's what Zinedine Zidane could have done post Cristiano Ronaldo. Maybe that could have worked. But just going back to that last season at Tottenham under Andre Villas-Boas, unplayable that year mm. and he's playing as a number 10 playing 4-2-3-1 as a number 10 so explosive I think the thing that really struck you that season was that power from range that ability to hit the target that from one range. against West Ham was not was one against Stoke minute. as well I think I can remember that was a, a volley a volley that On was the angle incredible and the Britannia day the will. Britannia and I think right at that point you know going back to the, the question that I kind of asked was he worth 100 million yeah I think he was mm. Real Madrid saw a player that had a lot of qualities that aren't coachable so when you bring him to a team of that quality of Real Madrid, he's just going to get better and better and absolutely worth every penny. And he just fitted in, didn't he? Where it was almost like that the position that he fitted into was made for him, wasn't it? Because you had Benzema, Ronaldo and Bale. And for the first couple of seasons, it seemed to fit perfectly. BBC. Yeah, nice. <laughs> That's what they were known as. But I think it's the, the, the blend of what... What you've got as a forward line, you've got that false nine player that's going to come off the line through the middle. Ronaldo's going to get into the box. But Bale can be that direct option. He's going to just be direct. He's going to get the ball and he's going to drive at you on the inside. He's going to look to get shots away. But also I think that, that interesting side with that Real Madrid team was the aerial threat they had. Ronaldo, we know he's unbelievable at you know, the, the height that he's got, the, the jump reach he's got. But Bale, very underrated in the air. Good timer of a header. Great time. He's one of the top scorers, I think, in, in the Champions League in that era with his head with Ronaldo with Benzema as well. Obviously, they crossed a lot from fullback, that Real Madrid team. Marcelo on that left-hand side. I think, you know, not only was he that ability to create something, but they'd have bodies in the box. And it made them so hard to play against that Real Madrid team. And that, you know, why they won three Champions Leagues in a row. 
one of the only sides to do that in the Champions League era. Yeah. You've got to go back to, you know, either Bayern Munich or Ajax with Cruyff or with, you know, Gerd Muller. Unbelievable teams. And yeah. Bale was a massive part of that. Now you've, you sort of, when he's come back to the Premier League, didn't start off how he wanted to with this sort of new Spurs season. Maybe muddied the waters a little bit on his legacy. Do you think he gets the credit he deserves? It's hard because I really find it difficult to hold it against Bale because I get that he's been out of form. I get his attitude is questionable with the stuff that he's done. But at the same time, I look at that Mourinho team and I look at the players and I sometimes think, if you're an attacking player, you're so restricted in that team. And I, I remember it was a game I was watching when he first like come into the team and he just didn't really look like he knew where he was supposed to be on the pitch. And I almost wonder what Mourinho's telling him to do and how much freedom he's letting him have. I mean, this is a side that's got Kane and Son, which they they want to use them as their source of goals. And it's almost like everybody else has got a different role on the pitch. And it doesn't really matter if they enjoy that role. And I, I just, I think that as a team, Tottenham are a very restricted team. So for me, I find it really difficult to, to hold it against him. And we've seen with a little bit more freedom, we've seen some of the, the recent goals that he scored and performances he's put in. And we're seeing bits of the old Gareth Bale come back. So for me, I don't think it's muddied his legacy at all uh, at Tottenham. It doesn't deserve to. I think it's more mud, muddied Mourinho because we mm. kind of can see again that Mourinho can't get X amount of good attackers into the side. You know, mentioned Son and Kane. They were the guys that kind of like cheat a little bit. They sit on the counter. That's Gareth Bale. And you can't, you just can't fit in the Premier League in the current state right now. You can't fit three of those players in. Mm. Dodgy transfer recruitment from Daniel Levy. For, you know, bringing Mourinho in was dodgy in the first place, but then putting someone like Gareth Bale in there that's going to take a bit of... I think what Gareth Bale needed was a, an arm around the show. He needed a Jurgen Klopp, not a Jose Mourinho. He needed somebody to say, look, you are a great player. Let's get your match fit and let's get you playing. It feels like Mourinho was like, let's get your match fit. Now you've got to do something, but you've got to do that within a structure that doesn't suit you. And I do I do feel for Gareth Bale. And I don't, again, I don't think, I think his legacy is kind of done in European football in a sense of he's been unbelievable in the Champions League. He had a great spell at Tottenham in the Premier League. It is more about Wales. Like that's where it feels for me right now is it is like I think that's what he's most passionate about as well yeah, right now because that's a, a, a country that's a team of players that respect him that I'm sure rally around him in the changing rooms he'll feel like a god there compared to what he feels at Tottenham and Real Madrid well, so you need legacy Germany. as well isn't it at <laughs> Wales because I mean to get to the semi-finals of the Euros in 2016 for a, a country the size of Wales incredible I mean that's like moments of a lifetime isn't it it is, but I think that, that you know they should do well again because I think, like I was sort of saying, a motivator Gareth Bale is very, very hard to stop. But it's about where Gareth Bale plays now. I think is the big thing. Look, he probably should be a centre forward now. I think it's it, the point's probably gone where you need him to defend. The point's probably gone where he's got that raw pace acceleration. It's yeah. kind of that Cristiano Ronaldo evolution. If the team, if let's pretend by some strange world that it's Britain at the Euros, not <laughs> not does Gareth Bale get in the team? Oh yeah. Straight oh, away, no, I without doubt. So. I, I really don't think so. I think the amount of attack, attacking talent that England have. So you'd probably say that Kane's going to play number nine. And I think that's above Bale as a nine. Yeah, but are we <laughs> talking like a prime Gareth Bale? No, no, we're talking current. Now. Yeah, yeah current. we're talking current. We're talking G Team GB goes to the Euros, which Ooh. will be pretty cool. <laughs> Combining the nations. So we get the Scottish aggression of Scott McTominay. I think he gets in. For who though? You've got Sterling, you've got Sancho. No, I think you'd be on the bench. Rashford. There's, yeah, I think you'd be on the bench. Quality. <laughs> Phil Foden. Yeah, good point, Dave. Well made. Um, I think he starts on the bench. Um, his move to his move to La Liga, absolutely like headline grabbing, sort of going on for ages as well. But especially in our, my lifetime, our lifetime, there's not been until recently many players that have made that big sensational move, especially to La Liga as well. I think the big thing as well is it actually had success. I think if we look back on it, yeah, maybe he didn't have the, as big an impact as he could have done with the, the injuries and so forth. Obviously, we, we talk a lot about injuries on this and reasons why they haven't made the, the top, top level. Well, but no, you do. That's big not, in the Champions League. With that brush you know, that's a short campaign, 13 games and you can win the thing. Yeah. Um, I think that in itself has got to be regarded quite highly. You take a look at Eden Hazard. Another player that's gone over from the Premier League to Real Madrid and just completely flopped. Yeah. I think we've got to look at it. Is that the, you know, you look at Hazard was potentially playing at a slightly higher level than when Bale left. So Bale probably playing at a higher level at Real, but Hazard was at the peak of his game 
went to Real Madrid and flopped. It's diff- it's it's a hard thing to not only have the be the highest, you know, the most expensive player in in the world and then make a success of it. Take that on board. Obviously a bit different with Ronaldo being there, they yeah. of the limelight shine, uh, you know, shine on him, but he stepped up. Which I think shows a lot about his character and his his quality of personality, I adaptability. Think- Whoa, stop what you're doing. If you want to listen to the full episode, click the link in the description and that will take you to your favorite podcast that way you can listen to the full thing and hear us rate our favorite players.